Yeah, hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. FOMC last night was relatively dovish with most members uh, choosing to uh, give the rhetoric that the Fed wants rates to stay longer for lower. That's caused the US dollar to reverse course ever so slightly and the US markets just to have a, a little dip in the backside because a lot of the macro data coming out of America has been a bit mixed and made reference to that. And uh, albeit things are obviously still doing okay, um, it's it's not like an all singing, all dancing version of the economy out there. So. Um, what a lot of traders are taking out of this is the fact that June's not, it's probably not going to be the month that the US does their first rate hike, um, a later rate hike and lower rates for a, it's a kind of a slower trajectory, a trajectory of higher rates in the future. So um, not a huge amount of activity in the US dollar, but it's, it's, it's easily done, uh, it's, it's especially versus the euro, it's uh, had quite a decent big reversal there, uh, and, uh, probably about you know, 80, 90 points, so it's not huge, um, but it's certainly what people will be talk talking about today. And you've actually got some ECB minutes due later on in today's session as well. Greece, Ukraine, um, still lots to talk about. So the US there is actually trading below potential support at 17,998.7 at the moment. So looking at the UK 100 that briefly reached an all-time high there yesterday, doji candle formation, uh, unable to close above 6906.8. Um, we're still relatively volatile this morning, back inside, the, inside this uh, ascending triangle formation, which it probably isn't that massively yeah. surprising. Um, we've not had like a, a staunch sell-off, obviously we break below this uh, potential trend line right here that might change things slightly, um, but you know, we're still looking for a close above 69.06 um, for the UK 100 to kind of soldier on. So looking at um, Japan 25, 15 year highs, the highest has been since 2000. Um, with the uh, dollar yen, uh, you know, the yen has been gaining a little bit of strength uh, following the FOMC announcement last night. It's not really holding back Japan. Um, some data out there just now is uh, is encouraging for their um, for their economy. But these two long -like candles that we actually have right here at eighteen thousand three hundred and six, uh, that's indicative of the fact that there is obviously uh, psychological resistance right there. There are some people looking to um, get out of their long positions right here, but there's nothing to indicate that there might be a, a big turnaround in Japan two two five. I'll be a trader will be looking at dollar yen for that yen exchange rate. So actually having a look at the dollar yen FX pair, still bouncing around 119. Uh, it's been doing so since uh, since December. You're probably getting a, a flattening of the uh, volatility up until that point. You can even see the moving averages are beginning to flatten out as uh, we trade in this tight range. The technicals as well are probably a little bit of a waste of time right now um, because they don't work well in a sideways moving market with the MACD for example. But you could look at the RSI and the slow stochastic there if you're looking for the overbought and oversold areas. But the moving averages are going to be um, not work, they're not going to be working that well in this particular instance just now. So 119 remains the pivot for dollar yen, and we'll see which position it goes next. So moving on to crude oil West Texas, we do have a crude oil inventories coming on a Thursday rather than a Wednesday. There are expectations that the uh, crude oil inventories today are going to be rather large. Um, we are breaking below the potential trend line here uh, on West Texas crude. Uh, if this was like an ascending triangle formation, it's broken the bottom of that uh, pattern right now, which if you follow the basic rules of the classical rules of technical analysis would, may, would be indicative of if you take the um, width of the triangle at the base, and apply it to the breakout, and that would give us a potential $43 um, potential support level, which obviously is the bottom of this area here anyway. Um, should we see an acceleration to the downside today? It's not looking um, that strong this morning, but um, it's only down 0.24% currently. But keep your eye on that crude oil inventory data um, that's due out. It's at 4 o'clock UK time today. So make sure you've got your alert set for that. There's actually quite a lot of economic data due today. You do have uh, US unemployment claims, Eurozone CPI, and the Philly Fed data as well. So there is uh, and obviously some ECB news coming later on. So looking at gold, obviously we had um, we talked about gold a lot, about it not being in a great place just now because of the dollar. Obviously the dollar just kind of rolled over ever so slightly. So we've got a hammer formation on gold. We've got further upside today, but we've been unable to break above 1218, which is the next potential resistance. Could be getting a death cross and moving averages. Technicals are moving into oversold territory, but not yet giving any strong reversal signal incidentally. 
Uh, if gold breaks above 1218, that maybe kind of changes things ever so slightly. The Dovish FOMC last night hasn't caused a huge massive shift in the FX markets. I would be kind of surprised if gold then suddenly begins to shoot up uh, quite aggressively, but certainly we are having a retracement just now, and 1218 is an important level for traders to be aware of. So, having a look at Euro dollar, if this was a symmetrical triangle formation, we're breaking out one side or the other right now. It's not had a proper close above it. You can see we pretty much were inside the, the, the pattern all night last night. Um, so, I think today and uh, well, today if you've got these ECB minutes coming out later on, um, that will give, and obviously Greece, if you've got a bit of a more idea if this, uh, if this loan extension is going to happen or not, you might be able to get some extra momentum on Euro dollar. Obviously there is a little bit of US macro data and um, Eurozone macro data due today, which could be the catalyst for us to break out those ranges. But if you look at Euro dollar, it has been flattening out for, well, since, since mid-2015, it's not done a huge amount even with all the fundamentals in the background. So GBP USD um, breaking above one spot 54.24, which is awesome for cable, as um, the minutes came out yesterday, very quite positive for, for, for the UK. Uh, and um, we are looking at one spot 55, uh, one spot 56 as the next potential resistance, with one spot 54.24 being a potential uh, support level. Uh, and certainly bearing in mind that Last night we closed pretty much on there and we're on there again just now. It uh, looks to be a lot of traders will be looking at this in the short term as well. So we've already covered the economic data for today. Fast forward on to Friday, a large amount of European uh, data. You've got German PPI, uh, German PMI, Eurozone PMI, uh, UK public sector net borrowing and retail sales. So um, very European focused. If you're trading Euro dollar, the DAX or uh, cable, the FTSE, these these date releases are all important. Make sure you set your alerts on your market calendar uh, so you don't miss any of these quite important updates. And as ever, keep your eye on the chart forum. Uh, make insights part of your layout going forward. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.